Hey guys, in this video I'm going to demonstrate a feature that will allow you to execute any kind of code on the server side in response to changes in your data objects. In the scenario that I configured, I have a table called Retailer. And the table is, is rather simple. It consists of two properties. One is the name and the other is a, a column called is open. The Retailer table contains a list of retailers. In my case, uh, there are two, two retailers. One is called Dillard, the other is JCPenney. And the is open column can have uh, a value of either uh, false, which means the store is closed, or true, meaning it is open. In the scenario that I'm going to program, I will create code that will be sending out email whenever this value changes. In order to do this, I'm going to set up custom business logic event handler. For this, I will switch to the business logic section and select data tables for the reason that the event handler responsible for monitoring changes in the objects that are being updated is going to be an, a data service event handler. Select data tables and click add event handler. Here, select an event that is called update since we will be creating an event handler for the update API. So when an object is being updated, we will be checking if that particular property being is open is changed. And uh, the context will be specific table because we're not interested in the update events for other tables. It's going to be strictly retailer. And we want to execute our code before the main backend list logic. So the code for the uh, event handler is created and we can download it using the download button. In fact, right here you will see this is exactly the place where we will be adding our code. So I'm going to click download. Backendless generates the zip file and the zip file is being downloaded right here. Once the file is downloaded, it will contain the following directory structure. There is going to be a bin folder that includes various utilities that you will need to use in order to debug your code locally and then to deploy it into production. The libs folder includes the jar file that is a dependency used by the generated code and the code that you might be adding for your custom business logic. There are project files for both Eclipse and IDEA and all the source code is sitting inside of the SRC folder. I opened this project in my IDEA and I already added some customizations that I will go over with. However, first and foremost, I'd like to bring your attention to this annotation. You will see uh, the add asset annotation with retailer in the parentheses. This references the table for which this event handler is attached to. The event handler must extend a specialized class. However, the code generator that I have shown to you earlier takes care of all of this. The name of the method that you will see here is significant. Before update indicates that this method will be executed anytime there is an update API invoked on the retailer table. In fact, one of the arguments for the method is an object retailer, and this is the object that the client using the API will be sending to backhandlers. And here, since it is a before handler, and before indicates that this code is executed before the default backhandless logic, it means in here you can execute any kind of logic before the actual update takes place. And this is exactly what we're going to be doing. Let me go over the code. The first line right here retrieves a data store for the retailer class. This is the data store that points to the retailer table. It includes all the methods that you can use to create, retrieve, update, delete the full CRUD set of operations on the retailer table. The next thing that we're doing is using the data store object. We're finding the retailer that is being updated from the database. So this retailer object called current retailer is what's currently sitting in the database. The updated retailer parameter is what's coming from the client. And the logic is going to be fairly trivial. We're checking if the is open property in the current retailer is different than the is open property in the updated retailer. If they are different, then I have a few lines of code that sends out an email using the built-in API available in Backendless SDK for Java. The body of the message is going to be very simple, just a one liner that says that a specific store is either open or closed, and similar for the subject line. Now that the code is ready, I will compile it, and the project is configured where the compilation output 
for the project goes into a special directory that is recognized by a utility that we call Code Runner, and I will demonstrate it momentarily. There is also a feature built into IDEA where there is a command line terminal built into the IDE and it defaults to the root directory of the project. I will switch to the bin directory that contains the code runner utilities. By the way, this classes folder is the, is the one where all the compilation is sending all the compiled classes to. So let me switch to the bin directory and I will run coderunner.sh. Notice that once code runner starts, it reports there is one event handler that is now registered for local debugging. And I can confirm this by switching to backendless console and then selecting the debug tab. And as you can see, this is our event handler that is registered uh, in backendless but running on my local computer. And what that allows us is to run and debug the custom code without uploading it to backendless but sending the API events to your backendless application. And this is exactly what we're going to do next, is to send some API requests to our custom business logic. So I'm going to switch to the data screen. And then here, select the retailer table. I will get one of the object IDs. So we will be working with this object, which is the retail store called Dillard's, and switch to the REST console that is capable of sending out REST API requests to backendless. I'm going to paste the object ID and then first of all click get so we can get the actual object that we will be updating. So here I'm going to copy this object into the request body in preparation for the next request and I'm going to strip out everything that is not really needed for the update operation. Specifically we will keep only the is open property, the name of the store, and then the class which references the table that the object is going out to. Now, when we send this object back to backendless, and first of all, change the is open to true. When we send it to backendless, backendless will reroute that request to my custom business logic script that is running locally on my computer, but we need to know that it really happened. Uh, we will know because an email will go out but it would be nice if we could just set breakpoint and see how that logic actually works once it runs in there. For this purpose, I will go back to my IDE and I also configured remote debug setup. It uses port 5005, the standard port for remote debugging. And I'm just going to attach to this process from my IDE. So now we confirm that the process has been attached. And uh, let's set the breakpoint right here. We'll go back to Backendless Console and then issue the PUT request. So there you go, the breakpoint is hit. And what's interesting, notice that the API request was actually sent to backendless.com and this code is running locally. And that's the beauty of the local debugging. And let's take a look what the values of these objects are. So the current retailer is this and we see that is open is false and then the updated retailer is open is true. So this a condition will trigger uh, the execution of our custom business logic. I'm going to just let it run and by going back to console we got the updated response and then an email is going to be delivered directly to my inbox. As you can see here's the email. The Dillard store is now open. Now that we have confirmed that the code is working the next step and the final step is to publish that code into production. Uh, for this, there is uh, another utility that we can use. It's called Deploy. I will stop the debugging mode, switch back to Terminal, and I will stop the code runner as well. See, Deploy.sh and Deploy.bat for Windows. If I'm going to run it right now, that's it. The code runner has been deployed to production. We do not need to run it locally, and anytime now we send an API request to update that object. If open is different than what's saved in the database, then there's going to be uh, an email sent out. You can confirm that business logic is deployed by clicking on business logic, selecting your event handler or the category for event handlers, and clicking on production. So this confirms that this event handler is in production. So now any API request 
that I send to the retailer table where is open changes from true to false or from false to true and email is going to be sent out. I hope this is useful. Thank you and happy coding.